hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today we are going to look at the latest version of livewire livewire now is part of the laravel's official packages so if you see the latest version of Li livewire is available as a subdomain of laravel.com and right now it's on beta but i thought why don't we just ex start exploring it because whatever is here is kind of what eventually we will get so yeah i'm quite excited about it and you know we will explore it together and i hope you will enjoy the magic of livewire 3 so let's get started so if we go to the documentation there is a quick start and i'll just want to let you know that if you directly do a livewire require right which is composer require livewire slash livewire then you will get version 2 as of 23rd july because current stable version is 2 whereas if you see the installation guide here we are going to load the beta version so you just need to be a little aware of that now i will start with a fresh laravel installation so first let me quickly spin up a new instance By the way, I'm, I was trying native PHP as well, so you know, that's how things are. Um, thinking of creating a different series on that as well, but for now, let's focus on Livewire. So I have the clean installation, and as the guide suggests, I will require the beta version, like so. And first, let's follow the quick start guide and understand what we have. Now, obviously, as the documentation says, you will need Laravel version 10 or later, PHP version 8.1, and I do meet all the requirements. I installed the latest version of Laravel, which is definitely you know, 10, so you know, things are fine over here. I have installed the beta plugin. Just to validate everything is fine, I will do this and then make Livewire counter okay which is their first command this will definitely create a component let us open up vs code and over here you'll see there are three files that got created it does list them over here as well one is a class file inside app livewire and the name of the component which is counter.php okay because i said my component name is counter and a supporting view file inside resources views livewire counter.blade.php all right so this is my counter.php where you know, it's a class which extends component method uh, sorry the component class okay it's an abstract class fair enough it has a render method and it returns the blade file which was created if you see over here okay it got erased but uh, let me show you we have resources views live wire counter dot blade dot php okay so yeah things are fine this is the class file this is the blade file and yeah i think nothing else welcome dot blade dot php is something which we don't need to look at right now okay it is trying to tell us to make certain code changes but before we do that let's understand a little bit about the config file and i'm talking about the config because i feel it is important to understand what's going on behind the scenes you know before you know we start writing a bit of code because we get a lot of context when you know certain things happen so if I go to the installation, you will see there is this command which will publish the config file. Why don't we do that? Okay. And it copies the config file from the vendor into config slash live wire. So why don't we open up config slash live wire dot php? So what are the different configs available inside the config file? First of all, it says that the 
class namespace is going to be this. This is a nice way for the package to say that you know, all the default components will reside inside this namespace. But if we want, we can change it, obviously. Now, we are not going to touch it right now, but it is important to know because, you know, for the auto discovery of components, this is important. Next thing is obviously the view file path. We can configure it if you want something else other than the view slash library, uh, sorry, live wire, which we saw over here, right? Our counter.blade.php went inside views slash live wire. So if you want to change it, you can do that. Then the next thing is layouts file. Now Livewire, when you are running a page component, which we will see in some time, right? These page components will need a layout file for it to render properly. And that's where this configuration comes into picture. Livewire also gives you the ability to upload files. And for that, this is the temporary file configurations. I'm not going to touch anything right now. They work very well out of the box. Now, this is one configuration where it says that render on redirect. What happens is if we have a redirect code, right? Sometimes what you want to do is first re-render re the component and then redirect. Okay. So if you see this value determines if Livewire will run a component's render method after a redirect has been triggered using something like redirect. So setting this true will render the view once more before redirecting. So if you want to show some kind of a feedback before you are taking the user to the next page, this kind of stuff is required. By default, it is turned to false. If you feel free to change it. Livewire 2 also gives us the ability to bind the models you know, using the wire model thing. A lot of things used to happen magically and by default it says that the model binding will be false but if we want we can use it your decision if you want to do it feel free to make it true and use it comes the inject assets auto inject assets is something which comes in live wire 3 previously you had to add these two directives inside your layout file for the styles and scripts to be injected in the layout file by Livewire. In the latest version, this is done automatically. Okay, but there are certain scenarios where you would want to control the way assets are loaded. And at that point, you can turn it to false and then add these two directives manually. Okay, we will see that later on in this series. Also, if you know, you are using a lot of, you know, page components and you have a SPA mode to your live wire application, then, you know, you can show this progress bar, which is set to true. And then this is one more configuration, quite important for live wire, which is, you know, live wire tends to re-render, you know, certain pieces of the HTML, right? Certain parts of your markup. And for that, it injects certain kinds of markups, uh, sorry, markers, right? Like if you see, it says to make this process more reliable. So Livewire intelligently morphs existing HTML into the newly rendered HTML after each update. To make this process more reliable, Livewire injects markers into the rendered blade surrounding if class for each. So basically these are identifiers as, as the word suggests, markers for Livewire to know which part of the markup needs to be re-rendered. And this thing is set to true. Okay. So yeah, this is what the configuration is. Now that we understand things a little more better, let's try and follow the quick start and create our first Livewire component. To add functionality to our live wire component that we had created, which is the counter component. What we will do is let's go inside counter.php and we will add a little bit of code based on what the documentation says. So a public property inside this class, which is let's say count equals zero, we'll add two methods.
like so. And then inside the increment, the code is pretty straightforward. We take the count and we increment it by one. And inside decrement, we see if the count is greater than zero and only then we decrement it. Okay. So there are two public methods and one public property. The reason for this being public is any public property or method inside the class is available for the component to render, which means I can do something like dollar count and it should render because this is a public property. Similarly, if I have a button called add, I can do something like wire click, which is a live wire you know, attribute and I can mention the method name over here for LiveWire to understand that on click of that button, I want to execute this. All right, so we have a component which has some functionality in it, but we want to show it on some page, right? So why don't we do one thing? First of all, let me serve the application on localhost 8000. I'll do this and inside the welcome page in here, why don't we render it? So live wire counter like this. So whenever you are trying to render a live wire component, this is the syntax. I hit refresh and I see the counter as zero and subtract two buttons are available. If I click on add, it is incrementing the counter count. Okay, by the way, the counter spelling is wrong. <laughs> and the subtract will obviously reduce it till it is zero and then it doesn't do anything, right? So this is working. We have our basic functionality in place. But right now, we rendered the component inside a blade file. So it's not a full page component. If we want to make a full page component, there are certain things that we need to do. I will show you the documentation around it and then we will do it. So basically we create a new route slash counter. We say that the counter class will be used when that route is requested for. And we need to create a template. And this is important concept. We need to understand why we need a template. But before that, why don't we go ahead inside web.php. Let's come over here, add a route called counter and counter class. If I haven't mentioned the layout file, you can see it says it is not able to find the layout file. So you know, that is obviously something which we need to create. So let me open up a new ver um, instance of the terminal and do um, what was the command? Live wire layout, right? Live wire layout that's it right okay so it will create a layout file inside app.blade.php let's open it up and see what is happening so components layouts app.blade.php we can see there is a slot in here and actually if i now refresh the page will render but it is important to know that there is a reason why this app.blade.php was created inside layouts. If you remember, the config file had a setting. Where is it? Da, da, da. Here. So for example, if I don't want the component to be component slash layout slash app, but I want it to be admin for some reason, right? Let me delete the previous one. So that you are sure okay that the new one is being injected can you see a new file called admin.blade.php was created the component will still render and if i open up admin.blade.php can you see now we are getting that so this is the beauty of these configurations because you know, I have the ability to control whatever is happening inside the application. 
I will now switch it back to the default. I will get rid of this file over here because I can easily create that. Go to the terminal. And now we have our app.blade.php back again and admin is gone. And obviously the counter will work as it should because although we are rendering inside a full page, the component is still the same. So yeah, that's about it guys. That's what we wanted to cover in this chapter. This is the quick start. We have just getting started. And um, yeah, we saw quite a few important concepts. What are layouts? What are you know the reason for having those public variables, public methods and stuff like that. We are going to deep dive into each essential part of the package. But yeah, this was the introduction. Hope you like it. So if you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.